The notion of limits and continuity are complicated concepts. There are epsilons and deltas dangling everywhere. You have to choose delta appropriately so that something happens, so on and so forth. We are now going to ease our burden by introducing a convenient language for speaking about limits. We will not use this language extensively because this is after all a first course where you have to write everything properly and rigorously. But nevertheless, in several instances in this course, it will be very useful to have this language at our disposal. So, just like language for limits, we talked about quantities getting close to each other as the uh, number n became arbitrarily large, right? So, we are going to introduce similar notions for limits. So, definition, definition. Let S be a set and let X be a limit point, point of the set S. Let P be a property, property defined or rather let p of x be a property defined on s. We say p holds for x arbitrarily close, arbitrarily close or sufficiently close, sufficiently close uh, so, best to call this limit point something else so that there is no confusion. Let, uh, let's say C be a limit point. Close or sufficiently close to, sufficiently uh, close to C if P of X is true, true whenever, whenever mod x minus c is less than delta and x is in s whenever there is some delta greater than 0 such that 0 less than mod x minus c less than delta and x is coming from s. So, let us revisit this. You have a set s and you are choosing a limit point c of this set s. You have a property P of X defined on S. We say P holds for X arbitrarily close or sufficiently close to C. If P of X is true, whenever there is some delta greater than 0, such that 0 less than X mod X minus C less than delta and X uh, is less than S. So to be 100% precise, if you don't mind, let me just reorder. Reorder this way I am writing so that things become clearer. If for some delta greater than 0, P of X is true whenever, whenever 0 less than mod X minus C less than delta and X is in C. So, what this is saying is you can make the property P true if you can find some delta such that P of X is true whenever X is sufficiently close to C and X is coming from C. We do not allow X equal to C simply because this C may not even be in this set. And the way we write this is analogous to way we define limit, it will be useful there. Okay. Now, next is definition, another definition, definition. definition let let s be a set let s be a set and let c be a limit point again limit point of the set s set s let let a of x be some algebraic 
expression expression involving x involving x coming from s okay we say a of x can be made made arbitrarily small arbitrarily small as x approaches c as x approaches c now this should be very very uh, familiar if if for each epsilon greater than 0 we can find delta greater than 0 delta greater than 0 such that mod a of x is less than epsilon whenever whenever mod x minus c is less than delta okay so uh, this just uh, i mean this just uh, giving uh, another meaning for the term limit okay uh, this is just saying that limit as x goes to c of a of x goes to 0 we have just calling it can be made arbitrarily small okay now why is this first and second definition useful well remark remark we can combine both these we can combine both both to talk about limits to talk about limits okay how do we do this well we can rephrase limit x going to c of f of x equal to l as saying mod f of x minus l can be made arbitrarily small arbitrarily small for for x sufficiently close sufficiently close close to c okay this is sort of combining the meanings of both of both the preceding definitions instead of saying limit x going to c f of x equal to l just means that given any epsilon greater than 0 there is a delta greater than 0 blah 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 you can just say mod f of x minus l can be made arbitrarily small for x sufficiently close to c this is a concise statement but nevertheless with the preceding definitions it's a very precise statement and not only that this is a nice way of thinking about limits you make x sufficiently close to c mod f of x minus l can be made arbitrarily small we have translated our intuition into rigorous mathematics via epsilon delta now that we have processed understood and made it part of our circulatory system it's best to now go back and try to use words that have more expressive meanings like arbitrarily small and sufficiently close but you should be very careful when you speak of this language because one when you use such language there is always the tendency to delude yourself into thinking that you have understood what is going on or worse write proofs that seems to make perfect sense but when you translate to rigorous mathematics the proof breaks down so in this course i will minimize using such language but the literature uses such language all the time okay uses such language all the time so it's best to be familiar with what this means okay so this is a convenient language for talking about limits we can also talk about infinite limits that will be the content of another module where we'll be talking about arbitrarily large instead of arbitrarily small okay this is a course on real analysis and you have just watched the module on a language for limits